Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to reading set number four. And what we're going to do in this reading is follow up the previous reading we had, which was the Book of Death, Fall of Harbinger number one, that came out in 2015, I believe. And we're going to read Harbinger number one, which came out in 1992, which was the first appearance of all the characters, all the major characters in sort of the Harbinger universe. And um, this book is, is basically the holy grail of the Valiant universe as far as collecting goes, right? Because if you show this cover to any, any collector, any comic book collector, they'll know exactly what this book is. And this is probably the book that's fetching the highest price right now from the Valiant universe, maybe aside from some of the incentive covers uh, that Valiant has released, right? And, uh, you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know I'm a Valiant fan, and we've talked a lot about the Valiant universe and the Valiant comic books. And uh, I'm just going to keep this intro fairly quick because we are going to revisit this book again uh, in detail when it comes to doing some stuff regarding the mathematics of investing in comics, right? But just to give you some info of who the creators of this book are, the cover for this was, the, the pencils was done by David Lafam, and the inks was done by Bob Layton. And both um, David and Bob uh, Layton are huge in the comic book industry, right? Dave Lafam actually got his start at Valiant Comics, and he's done tremendous amount of works. He's won Eisner Awards. He's did, he did straight bullets. He did, and you know, numerous other books for numerous other publishers. And he was basically, I believe he was a teenager when he started working with Valiant Comics. Jim Shooter was basically the first person that gave him the opportunity to, you know, dive into the comic book medium and get his name out there right and uh, bob layton is huge as well he's worked uh he's been in the industry for a very long time he's worked for numerous publishers and, and he's had uh, he's a tremendous number of work books out there and he was basically one of the co-founders of valiant comics with jim shooter right and this is the cover for number one okay this is what we're gonna read this is number two let me show you these guys as well this is number two. Okay. This is number three. <laughs> Beautiful covers. And um, one thing, and this is number four. Xerox. So, okay, this one's missing the missing the coupon. It's a Xerox copy. Okay. And this is number four. And something we should appreciate with. Uh, Valiant comics uh, that were very different when they first came out in the 1990s. Their covers were very clean. Okay, there was a you know a lot of other publishers were putting out comic books and they they were messy and they had text and they had advertisements and all this stuff going across them and trying to catch your eye. And Valiant comics when they first came out, their covers were just artwork, simple with their logo and. You know the information on the side here the coloring was unique because uh, i'm not sure how they did it i'm pretty sure they did all of the coloring by hand but i'm not 100 sure on that i looked this up a long time ago but their coloring was different their lettering was different they didn't use if i remember correctly they didn't use any sounds text for sounds when things were blowing up or when there were fight scenes and stuff like this so they presented their material a little bit different and they were more mature in terms of superhero comics goes okay so that's my sort of uh quick little short in intro to this and uh the only other thing i can share is um i couldn't find the sources for this but i remember reading in a couple of articles that when jim shooter put out harbinger number one he actually held it up during an interview he held up the book and said this book is going to be as important as X-Men number, Uncanny X-Men number one. That's the way I remember it. And I found a source online that actually said Jim Shooter held this book up, Harbinger number one, and said, this book is going to be as, um, as important as Avengers number one, right? So I'm not sure if he said X-Men number one or Avengers number one, but, um, you know, that's 
according to Jim Shooter, that's how important this comic book is. And according to those who collect Valiant Comics and read Valiant Comics, this is on that level. This is an extremely important book, okay? Just to give you a feel for how people uh, feel about this this series and this title, because this um, a lot of people assume that um, Valiant Comics would not be what it is if it wasn't for Harbinger, okay? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, and I don't know if I would 100% agree with that, because Exo Man of War, Turn of Warrior, Bloodshot, they are huge as well. Uh, but this is the team book that sort of put them on the map for a lot of people. Okay. So, let's have a read through Heart Ranger number one. And I've been itching to reread this. I've read, re, re, you know, I've read this, I think, three or four times probably over the years. Uh, but it's been years, it's been years since I read this. And as far as a grade goes for this comic, everything is meant about it except it's got a little thing here. And the coupon still is here as well, okay? It's got a little, if you can see it right there, right? And a lot of Valiant comics, their edges at the time, let's see, they, they weren't sharp. They were the edges on this side were sharp, but the edges on the binding side, in the top and the bottom, they sometimes did this. If you can see that, right? So I'm not sure what the grading, you know, what type of negative mark the grading gets for this. Uh, I'm assuming not very much, but for this, you would definitely take it down a notch, right? If this wasn't here, this would be graded. Uh, at 9.8 um, I'd be surprised if it got anything less than 9.6 right as far as this goes it's a beautiful cover really stands out okay children at the eighth day okay, let's um before look at this <laughs> that's Peter Let's, uh, let's read the fine print for this in here before we read, you know, delve into the story, okay? That way we're not going to interrupt the story by reading the fine print. Let's see if we can get this going. And I like reading uh, the older books a little bit because they don't have the glare like the new books when it comes to having glossy inside, right? Let's take a look at this. So, Harbinger, Volume 1, Number 1, January 1992. Published by Valiant, a division of Voyager Communication Incorporated. James Shooter, President, Steve J. Mussorgsky, Secretary, Office of Publications, 275 7th Avenue, New York, New York, 1001. A copyright 1991 Voyager Communications, okay, Incorporated. All characters herein and the distinctive likeliness thereof are trademark of Voyager Communication. All rights reserved. Dollar ninety five per copy. Two fifty Canadian. Okay, so dollar ninety five is U.S. Two fifty Canadian. Use U.S. subscription rate twenty three dollars. Uh, what does that say? $23.40 for 12 issues, uh, payable in U.S. funds, $30 Canadian, printed in the U.S., no similarity between any of the names, characters, persons, and or institutions in this magazine with those of any person living or dead or in actual... or or any institution is intended and any such similarity which may exist is purely coincidental right which is sort of the same type of um, fine print we get for other publishers right chopper lifter 2 rescue survey 
save the hostages, save the world. JVC Moscow Industries official. Get ready, JVC is here with hot new games. <laughs> I don't think JVC makes any more games. Look at the look at the screenshots of the game. Right. Crazy. The enemy is armed and everywhere. Hectic hilly heroics risk required. Save the hell, save the hostages, save the world. Right. Okay, let's read Harbinger number one. This thing looks beautiful, really. It was very unique when this thing came out, when Valiant comics were co coming out. They were so different, so different than uh, they stood out compared to the other books out there. Okay, let's not flip through this. Let's just read it. All right. Um, so, Harbinger, this story is called Children of the Eighth Day. Okay. Nice splash page. Right. Let's read this thing. I-95. Near the Washington National Airport, District of Columbia, June 2nd, 1991, 2.35 p.m. Because the guys in the helicopter were, were staring at us. I think they know who we are. Pete, get back in here. Don't worry, Chris. I'll set us back down after we lose them. So Pete's got the car flying in traffic, right? Going over traffic. Maybe if we went down under the trees, Pete. No, I might hit something. Maneuvering this thing is like flying a blimp in a hurricane. Besides, those guys are starting to bug me. The helicopter's still chasing them. Pete, come back here. I can barely drive on the ground, Pete. I've still got control, Chris, don't worry. Why are you guys following us? Who sent you? None of your business, he says. Dave, don't fool around with this guy. I'm taking you down, Pete says. Moments later, honest kid, the guy said he was FBI. He pays us to spot cars, to catch drug dealers, I guess. He said to keep it quiet, to protect our families. Are you sure you didn't radio where you were? Pete asks. Pete, look that, look down the road. Someone's coming. Oh, there they are. Take a look. Right there. There's three people coming. Come on and smoke his butt before his head clears. Don't let it, Weasel, or we're in big trouble. Eel, you again. So she's Eel. 
Why can't you just leave us alone? You think we want to mess with your boyfriend? How can you have a relationship with him? Or does he force you? Stay right by the car. If you move an inch, I'll electrocute you. Hang on, Wheeze. I'm coming. Yo. Get off, Pete says. He throws Wheeze off. Cool. All right, then. I'll get him myself. Oof. It's Pete in the back. Got to kill you, mate. You're a loose cannon. No hard feelings, yo. Make it quick and sure lump. Hurry, slowpoke. Pete, Pete. Chris is yelling. Oh, picks up Pete. All right, I'll tear, tear his bloody head off. No, he's freaking out. my eyes cock I'm sorry oh did he just pull up his eyes you had to Pete he was going to kill you lump what's wrong Pete probably just yanked on his optic nerves Pete says it's like he has ghost hands that can that can do anything like squeeze your heart into pulp so you better back off eel now listen you try any of that crap on me and i'll sizzle her like bacon that's what eel says but you can't aim your electricity you just it just jumps to the nearest good conductor right if she's not touching the car, Chris makes a lousy target eel. Oh. Picks up the car and drops it on this guy. Lump. I hate you, bro. Punches eel in the stomach. Chris, you shouldn't have done that if you touched her bare skin. Whoa, eel, don't. There's gasoline all over. Oh. Eel's gonna. Oh, eel's. She's sending out electricity pulse right there. Right. Going across. Hits the car. Look at the lump on the ground. felt a wave of heat slamming into me and suddenly we're here how did you do that chris asks i just moved us real quick this is still pretty new to me chris i'm not sure how i do stuff sorry about your car i guess we'll have to wing it from here 4 15 p.m boy flying is for the birds i mean Look at our faces. I know, the wind really beats you to death, huh? It's worse than riding a motorcycle. Well, when can we stop? She asks. Richmond, Virginia. 4.21 p.m., so just a few minutes later. My purse was in the car. Do you have any money? About 30 bucks, Chris. 
about 30 bucks, Peter says. What are you kids, 16, 17? A couple of filthy little sex fiends. Get out of here. Go home, the guy says. Pete, let's go, okay? No, you're exhausted. We'll go someplace else. We're staying here, Pete says. You can see a little light on Pete's eyes. A little line, white line. Same thing occurred before. A little white line. Shows what he's doing. We'll go someplace else. We're staying here, Pete says. Give us a room now. And we're just ordinary travelers. Got that? Yes, sir. It's spooky when you do that Jedi mind trick thing. I don't like you doing that. I don't either, but you're too tired to go on, Chris. Hey, this is nice. Do you feel all groggy too? Let's take a shower. Then maybe I can wash out our clothes in the sink. Pete, Pete's passed out. June 3rd, 1991. 9.43 a.m. Yep, just like I thought. Here's another one. Let's see. What are they looking for? They're looking at the classifieds. Let's check it out. They must run them all over the country, maybe all over the world. I bet they spend a fortune on these ads. Let's read this miscellaneous. What does that say? Are you different? Do strange things happen to you or around you? Do you feel abnormal? There's no need to be afraid. Our organization has helped many outstanding people like yourself. Nonprofit, no religious affiliation. For more information, write to the Harberger Foundation, P.O. Box 1878, Richmond, Virginia, 10021019, Harbinger Foundation. And that's Harada's foundation that looks for uh, special uh, people, right? Psyots with abilities. Just to lure people like me into their clutches. That's what he says the ads do. Pete, I've been thinking about those poor kids they sent after us. I mean, they were our age. If we met them at a dance, we might have liked them. Even Lumpy probably wasn't such a bad guy until the Harbinger Foundation got a hold of him. They make people into like Moonies, convinced they're on a mission for goodness and right, Pete said. If only we could keep people from falling for their baloney. Chris replies, yeah, I don't want to kill anyone else. Shh. Oh, there's a cop in the background. The old lady hears him. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. People write to the Harbinger Foundation. Maybe we can interrupt, intercept the letters. How? There's the coupon. Should we read the coupon? Let's read the coupon before we do. 
Harbinger. In June of 1992, Valiant will release Harbinger Zero, the powerful prequel to the outstanding new series. Each issue of Harbinger, Harbinger from number one to number six will contain a numbered coupon. Valiant will redeem each complete set of all six coupons plus a small handling charge for a copy of Harbinger number zero. This beautiful collector's item by David Latham and Jim Shooter will be available through this offer only. Full instructions, full instructions for redeeming all six coupons for a copy of Harbinger number zero will be published in Harbinger number six, shipping in March 1992. California 1957 another doctor again they argue with him in whispers but that doesn't matter I can even hear what they don't say they are very very afraid of me so this is her Adam most likely right. copyright 1981 Voyager communication incorporated should we take a look at let's crack this open too sorry to interrupt the story but since we're here let's do this i don't want to damage these here's the second coupon Same story. Let's take a look at this. The story of Harada. Every night they talked about what to do about me. They wish I'd never been born. They hate me. They used to only think about killing me. They know I know. So now they talk about it every night just because I'm different too bad for them oh he breaks in check this out he breaks into their room and there's blood splattering everywhere the last panel let's take a look at the I knew we were gonna read these. I was gonna, I would have brought all six, number five and number six, read the whole thing of her eye, right? But let's read up to number four. We got those here right now, right? Why not? Here's number three. them anyway I'm a big boy so he just killed his parents I guess or his uh, whoever was taking care of him and he's leaving and let's take a look at number four and then number four is supposed to be a Xerox copy, so. Here's 
Here's the Xerox copy, but check this out. The the paper quality of this is less than the paper quality of this. This is thicker. sought after because of the lowest print run harbinger from that era. Let's read this. The story of Harada. This is my company. I run it my way. I've overcome significant obstacles, not the least of which is my age. Oh, look at him, he's walking on the table. I don't remember reading this at all. We are very successful, but this is just the beginning. If you can see, there's a big chair there, and there's a little person sitting there. That's him, I guess. And Alf's on the table and walks on the table. Cool. Mm, look at this. The board for this needs changing. It's going, changing color, right? Okay, I'll put this in and change it later. to the Harbinger Foundation. Maybe we can intercept the f letters. How? Chris asks. And the Harbinger Foundation is what we just looked at. Harada, the kid, right? That killed his parents, I guess, or his caretakers and started a company. That's the Harbinger Foundation. Okay. That's who's after Pete. Eleven forty-five p.m. Pete, isn't this a federal offense? United States Post Office. Oh, we broke into the post office. Chris, if you don't want to, you know, get involved. I understand. He says, "I'll never desert you, Pete. No matter what." But this is scary. Look at all the letters. Hmm. These boxes are open from the other, other side. I guess I didn't have to break in. Next time I'll know. Eleven fifty-three p.m. Eight minutes later. Boy, the police came fast. Man, I've got a lot to learn about burglary. Don't you think there was a silent alarm or something? Hey, don't lose any of those letters after all that. Oh, he's dropping a few of them. June 4th, 12.49 a.m. I can't get over the one from the kid who thinks he's got a Watermelon glow growing in his stomach. Laughing. How about this one? He says that wearing his sister's teddy under his clothes makes him feel different. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, this guy says he saw ETs with eight legs get into a UFO. This one's very sincere. She dreams about flying a lot. I know that's not unusual, but on several occasions, I've awakened floating an inch or two above my bed, just for a second, then I fall. We know who that is. Look at 
looks like they're checking that one out. Four thirty PM. That must be her house. This is kind of exciting, Chris says. Hi, is Faith home? Well, she sure is. Come right in, kids. How nice of you to drop by. She'll be so delighted. <laughs> Cooking up a storm. Hi, Faith. I'm Pete, and this is Chris. I don't know you. What do you want? Faith, I'll be in the kitchen if you and your guests want some cookies. Is there some place we can talk privately? You can come up to my room, I guess, if you don't touch anything. Thanks. She's wearing a Star Trek shirt. She got the logo. Nice. Look at all the collectibles she's got. Look at the dice. Nice. This is nice, Faith. Are you, you know, trekker? Chris asks. No. What is, what is it you want? Nobody comes here to see me. Is this some dumb trick? She says. Look at the Klingon. I think that's a Klingon spaceship right there. This letter you wrote, I knew that ad was a setup, she says. Oh God, I wish I'd never written that letter. Why did you come here? To make me beg you not to show it to everyone in school? But you would anyway, she says. Why can't you just leave me alone? Get out. You don't understand, Chris says. here to make fun of you I wrote a letter like yours once too holy fella fella grubs fella grubs oh the teddy bears moving take a look at this teddy bears dancing Star Trek the Enterprise is flying Peter's floating Holy Felgrath, you must be telekinetic. Is the Harbinger Foundation a school for mutants? I knew it, she says. Harbinger is a big, powerful organization. They killed my best friend in the world. They're trying to kill me. If you fall for their crap, They'll trick you and use you. That is, if you really can do, you know, special things. How can we find out, Pete? I can, I can, Faith says. Sometimes I'll dream of flying and when I wake up, the mattress is bouncing a little like I just landed on it. And that's not all. Street lights go on when I... What are you doing, Pete? Taking a look at her mind. Oh, she's just stuck on I when she was saying it right. She's paused. So Pete's taking a look at her mind. Faith continues. Lights go on when I pass by, and sometimes I get 
premonitions. Like I knew you were different like me, Pete. And, well, nope, Pete says. Huh. Uh, look, Faith, we just wanted to warn you about Harbinger. We've got to go now. Oh, well, call me if you need help or anything, anything, anytime. They're laughing outside, Chris says, and she makes street lights go on. What a riot. Chris is laughing. You should have seen inside her head. It's like a movie starring Super Faith and Arnold Schwarzenegger versus the ex-mutant Klingon Galactic Terror Clone Empire. <laughs> Other than that, she's perfectly normal, Pete says. She just wishes she could. Hey, guys, look at me. Wow, she's flying. Perfectly normal, Chris says. Maybe I triggered it somehow. Isn't this great? Now I can help you guys. Please, I mean, people like us have to stick together, right? Well, I guess, Pete says. Great. Wait here, okay? I just want to pack a few, few costumes and things. Chris, she'll get into trouble if we leave her on her own just for a while okay oh, Chris is rubbing her eyes <laughs> like it's been, she's already got her outfit on she's got a costume on awesome it's not like it's too heavy it's just that I don't understand why you need all this stuff Faith Call me Zypher now, okay? You know, it's hard holding your arms out like this when you fly. Gee, Chris, how come Pete has to carry you? Aren't you one of us? She is not st <laughs> staying in our room. <laughs> uh, she is not staying in our room, Chris says. Oh, the cops have showed up in the hotel. Hey, look, police. Oh, oh, Pete says. All I remember is that the people I rented that room to seem like ordinary travelers. That's the hotel guy again, right? This photo was taken by a security camera at the po post office. We know they were here. You must have seen them. Looks like we need another place to stay place to stay oh that's pete in the background they're on the rooftop can you see them yeah. or one of them was saying that there's that girl that was fighting them right the wheeze i believe Everett Hart's auto salvage near Lynchburg, Virginia, June 5th, 1.39 a.m. I'm cold, Pete. Can I come over there with you guys? That must be fake. Chris, is it, it is kind of cold. Maybe if we huddle together. Pete, I don't care about sleeping in a junkyard or living on a Big Mac living on Big Macs, but I don't want to huddle with her. And if you do, you can have each other. You're jealous because you're just an ordinary human. Oh, face says that. That's not a nice thing to say. That 
does it. Either the fly cow goes or you can't do anything. You're just excess baggage. Oh, why am I fighting? Oh, I think Pete, Pete's controlling them. See, see the little line on his eye? He takes control of them. And they all chill. I'm sorry. You did it again, didn't you? You swore you'd never do that to me again. Oh, Pete. Oh, Chris is pissed. I'm sorry. I just wanted us not to fight. What happened? Fitz says. I ran my way into your head and took over. Frack. That stings. That happens when I pull out real quick. Brain rape inter interruption interrupt us he says and sting his uh is pete's sort of nickname just like zypher's face right rape interrupt us he mind raped them i guess I don't know what to say. I was wrong. The kind of thing Harada would do. Who? Fitz says. Toyo Harada. He runs Harbinger. He's trying to make the world a better place. His way. Whether we like it or not. Fitz says. Pete. He'll ask me something. I didn't give it, give it a thought then. But now. Are you forcing me to be your lover? No, Pete says. There's a story to that. Do you really understand that what you just did is evil? Yes, Pete says. Pete, if you ever do it again, you'd better keep control or I'll kill you in your sleep. Now, this is what we're going to do. Chris says. We're going to find more people like you and Faith. I mean Zypher. We're going to stick together and be a team. Maybe someday an army. We're going to live better than this. Even if we have to borrow some things. Borrow is an idea. I'll keep track of who we owe. Start starting with the Moonlight Motel. We'll pay them back someday. But in the meantime, we're going to do whatever it takes to stop Arata and anyone else who plays God. This is a war, Chris says. We're going to need all our strengths. Let's get to sleep. Peachtree Place, Atlanta, Georgia, June 6, 11.50 a.m. Are you going, going to Harbinger? You must be a mind reader, sugar. Or do I just look different to y'all? Look, there are a few things you ought to know about them. Oh, this is the Pete's walking into the Harbinger Foundation. Take a look. And he's gone into the file room. Take a look. Hello, I'm Todd Bevins. Are you Peter Stanchek? You must be a mind reader. No, I'm not, he says. People like you are very rare and special, and you face unusual pressures. It must seem like everyone's against you sometimes. But Pete, look. Look what you're doing. Breaking and entering. Theft. 
manslaughter. Let us help you before it's too late. We understand we're not the enemy unless you make it so. Says. You make me sick, Peter says. Throws him off. Shoes fly. Pete, you're not, uh, you're not as all-powerful as you think. We have ways to neutralize your abilities. Listen to me. You're headed for disaster, but you can still change that. Let's sit down and talk. Please, Pete. Bite me, Pete says. Hey, you're still here. My God. That's Flamingo. He's got all the documents he wants, right? The abandoned home's standard textile mill near Tucker, Georgia, 1.02 p.m. Hi, guys. This is Charlene Dupre. Hi, Sting. Wow, is she a new recruit? Boy, the raid really went well. I can't wait till I'm experienced enough to see some action. She's got a new recruit, Chris asks. Only on my driver's license. My friends call me Flamingo. Charlene Dupur. Flamingo. I met her at Harbinger. How many did you have to pick from? On the Zypher Faith says. I can fly. What do you do, Flamingo? Well, Zypher, I have always been hot. But Peter turned something on, on in my head, and now I get very hot. Ah, uh, why don't you show them, Flamingo? We're going to have to get you a costume made of unstable molecules. Does whatever that is come in pink? I only wear pink, she says. Maybe we can get some of that fireproof stuff race car drivers wear. Hurry, Chris says. My goodness, I entirely lost control. You all should have helped me. Peter, darling, like you you all did the first time. He was so gentle on my mind. I'll bet, Chris says. I have some clothes you can borrow. Burnt off her clothes. So why don't you all help her? Pete, darling. That's Chris talking. But you don't like me doing going into people's minds, Peter says. Speaking of which, I decided we should call you Sting because of the way your brain zap hurts. What do you think? Hey, I found a pink cape. One thirty-five p.m. I wonder why they use a zillion local post office boxes instead of one central one. Call up Arata and ask him, Chris says. Boy, thousands of names in these files marked investigated negative, all except Flamingo's. She's marked Class A. 
hey, here's a file marked investigated inconclusive class D. A guy named John Tolkson. Tolkson. Maybe we should go find him. My name is usually marked with four stars and an exclamation point in those little bitty black books. Flamingos class A. No, that's a waste of time. If this guy was anything special, they would have found out. I know how they work. Chris, or oh, sorry. Pete says, you don't know everything, like about the post, post boxes. I think we should check this guy out, Chris says. It says class D, it's probably a super long shot, yeah. I wonder what you'd say if I were another girl. If it were another girl. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry I brought it up. If it says. Chris, it might even be a trap that Mr. Bevan said they were expecting me. Then you just stay here nice and safe with the rest of the har harem while I check it out. Chris, let go of me, she says. All right, all right. We'll all go, okay? What's that? Decatur, Georgia, 3.15 p.m. Yo, Torque. Some kids here to see you. Squirrel. Three of them girls. Hello. <laughs> That's Flamingo in her, in her pink little outfit. Check out the page, right? You're John Tol Tolkelson. Uh, I guess you wrote a letter to the Harbinger Foundation, right? I guess you think you're funny, Pinhead. <laughs> or did that butt wipe Joe Bob con you into this? Beat it before you lose some teeth. My name's Flamingo Sugar. Is that a crankshaft you got there or are you just glad to see me let's go come on flamingo later she says pete he was holding a transmission so he's a big gorilla he's a gorilla big deal he's not like me how do you know do you look in his head? Faith asks. A little, enough to see he's irritated. Somebody else must have written to Harbinger about him. I figured that out. He didn't really look, did you? Chris asks. I was looking at his packs, and here they come again, she says. It's Faith. Hey, y'all, I got us a ride. You weren't lying, she flies. Wow, neat car. What is it? It looks like a Mustang. 67 Mustang, maybe. It's got a little Mustang logo in there in the front. Right. Oh, 
Pete, let's go. Take another ride. We're not going anywhere with them. I'm telling you, he's just a normal human. He's not like me. Yeah, well, I'm not either, remember? Chris says. Come on, Pete. Let's have some fun. Yeah, Sting, come on. He says. Thought you said this was a war, Chris. The home strands mill, 8.06 p.m. Sting's going to miss a really great cookout. My mother's probably making her yucky tuna casserole tonight unless she's out combing the countryside for me. He says. Will your parents be worried if you don't come home for dinner, Flamingo? My mama's surprised when I do turn up at night, Zypher. She's starting a fire. Hey, babe, let my fire anytime, sugar. Never can ask for it. Thanks for buying all the cookout stuff, Tark. You gotta eat. You're you're a growing blimp, Zephyr, Zeph, Zeflin, Zeplin. I guess that's how he's pronouncing it. Zeplin, I declare, you're a scandal, Tork. Eight thirty-eight p.m. Peter's outside, just waiting. 9, 12 p.m. Sugar, why are you sticking around here? Why don't you just take a little ride, you and me? Man, you're hot to trot, aren't you? Torque says. And that was cold as ice. Looking at Chris. Why don't you go find a weenie to toast for a while, girl? So what's with you? Don't tell me you miss your little butt white boyfriend, Tork asks. Like a faith fly in the background. Oh my god, tofu can go to get lost. You know, you don't fool me. I can tell you're pretty bright. This macho Neanderthal bull is a cover-up because you're ashamed of your ignorance, right? Hey, you're real smart, aren't you? Tork says. You know, you don't fool me either. You're not, you're no ice queen. I'm going to sleep in the car, babe. I mean, Chris, you can join me if you want. Maybe we'll both learn something. Where do you think you're going, Flamingo says. Where, wherever I want. What's your problem? Ow, oh, hey, let go. He's mine. Leave him alone, Flamingo says. Pulling Chris's hair. I told you, let go. Boom, punches Flamingo. I always lose fights. Every gal whose bow I ever stole by giving him what he wanted beat my eyes black ever since first grade. But now I ain't just a clumsy, helpless fool, am I? Now I can burn you, she says. Yes.
your boy was making eyes at me. So you're after Torque. Well, this time you're going to wake up with your head stuffed down a, down a toilet. Careful, Flamingo. We're out of pink clothes. Whoa. Chris grabbed her. That's enough. Chris says, stop, stop. Torque, I want to talk to you. That's Pete. You work for Harbinger, don't you? I work for Moore's at Atlantic. I guess that's the mechanic shop. Don't get cute with me. Answer the question. I did. And you can thank your girlfriend for that. She's teaching me manners. What the fork is Harbinger? He doesn't even know how to spell it. Pronounce it. Harbinger? Man, you're not even a good spy. You're playing too dumb. I'll just see for myself what the truth about you is. This is going to sting, jerk, as much as I can make it. sorry I was wrong all wrong oh, he's not a spy Chris asks you son of a I'm going to kill you oh, Torque is pissed no no wait oh, picks up the car check that out Torque look what you're doing Faith in the background saying it. I'm sorry I hurt you, Pete says. Move away from him, Chris. I'm going to, to. Oh, look at that. Surprise, he's picked up the car. Man, I, I think I bent the frame. Look, I apologize. I've been acting like a kid, Chris, or Peter says. What I saw in your head, I don't know what to say. I thought I had it rough growing up. Those people, what they did to you, man. All I ever wanted was to be strong enough to bust their heads. What did you do to me? Torque says. It's me, but you're not normal anymore. Unless you can, you can I usually pick up cars. Pete says. Pete, do you hear something? What's that noise? Sounds like a chopper. Faith says. Oh, here comes Harbinger. Better get out of sight. Oh, something's attacked Pete. Pete, Pete, Chris says. Hey, they're coming here. Heads up. Oh, no. There's that girl from before, right? Wheeze, I think. 
That's a big helicopter. They want to kill Pete. Torque, help. Girlfriend's in the way. Can't take chances with them. Shoot through her. Oh no. Oh no, you don't face us. Rats too slow. I think they're firing. Back away and you won't get hurt. You're going to hurt me, Torx says. Too many of these guys to shake them all off the ropes. What would Arnold do? Go, go to the source. Ark, Torque misses the punch. You're one of us, good. I can really thump you. Things done. Look at that. I'm sorry, but under the circumstances, I have to disable you. Try to make it non-permanent, the girl says to Torque. I'm just going to nail him. Flamingo's coming in. Oh, burns her. Arc. Don't you dare. Hey, yo. Stop, you crazy f Firing in there, but oh, the guy stopped them. What was that? Faith went to the source, just like Arnold would. Have. Torque, torque. Flamingo's asking torque. Worried about him. Knife for hurry. Oh. Why are you guys so excited about a fat girl being in your helicopter? She asks. She's already hit. We could flip her off him. Easy. No time. Oh, the guy's trying to prove not shoot Chris. I bet you're worried about him. Oh, nails the person. Faith comes in. Nails this guy. That guy's been dampering Peter's uh, psychic abilities, right? Or telekinetic abilities. Peter's free now. Oh, he's come to fire. Oh, they were gonna kill him.
Earth is being attacked. Oh God, help. Whoa. That's Peter grabbing Faith, pulling her out of her helicopter, blowing up the helicopter at the same time. Wow. Did you do that sting? Yeah. Chris is hurt bad, he says. Peter, this is Mr. Bevins. I know you can hear me. Hear this. I'm afraid that tonight you crossed the Rubicon, as they say. You've done too much damage. Killed and hurt too many people. It's war now, Peter. Surely, you can see we have the power to destroy you. You barely escaped tonight. You won't next time. If you care about your friends, you won't drag them down with you. Think about it. Good night. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I do. Take care of Chris. Then you and me go rip their throats out, as Torx says. Y'all ain't going without me, Flamingo says. Or me, Faith says. But you know, being a superhero isn't like I thought it would be. What does this say? Writer, Jim Shooter. Pencils, David Laffham. Inker John Dixon, colorist Janet Jackson and the Nod, Nobs, letterer John Costanza, editor Janet Jackson. That's the first appearance, first issue of Harbinger. All right, let's see what the back cover is. Nice. More little handheld games, right? The Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants. Acclaim Entertainment. Look. Here's a subscription thing. And a letter from Jim Shooter. Let's read this. For sure we read this, right? Let's take a look. Let's see what Jim Shooter says. Right, and Jim Shooter is huge. He's one of the giants in the comic book medium. Some people credit him by saving Marvel Comics in the 70s and 80s. He was editor in chief when Secret Wars came out. He was the one that was able to buy the rights for Venom and countless, countless, countless other, other other things including starting Valiant Comics which was huge 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 right let's take a look at this a guy named Daniel H Bigelow wrote a wonderful letter to me recently okay, let me get this closer so wonderful letter to me recently it was a general rave combined with a number of insightful observations and thoughtful suggestions he took issues with my claim that valiant was a no frills comic company citing the special insert origin of the solar of solar the magnus trading cards etc as gimmicks it wasn't that he was disturbed by these in fact he closed the paragraph with, if you feel this will help your chances to succeed, more power to you. I wrote a brief thank you to Daniel that also explained that I never said no frills. I happen to like frills if they add value. We offer premiums or gimmicks if you prefer, but we don't do ripoffs. A flip book, in my opinion, is neat. Five variations of one issue is blatant greed. That's something that's prevalent right now, right? It's 
blatant greed. I'm pleased to report that Magnus Robot Fighter and Solar Amanity Atom are thriving and have done gone up in sales each issue. Despite the tidal wave of products from Marvel and DC, people are discovering us. People are also beginning to realize that we're witnessing the birth of a universe into which each new Valiant title is carefully merged. The newest title, Harbinger, debuts this month. Please try it. If you pass it up, I think you'll, you're making a mistake roughly equivalent to passing up Avengers number one back in 1963. And that's the quote I was looking for. So it is Avengers number one, right? If that statement makes you smile, then take a look at what Valiant's Magnus Robert Fire number one is going for in the trade trade ads between eight and fifteen dollars. Now check and see how much your X Force number one is worth. Harbinger is largely the brainchild of penciler David Lapham. Nice. As I've mentioned before in this column, this guy is emerging as a major talent. I warned you about Frank Miller back in the late 70s. Check my Marvel bullpen, bullpen bulletins from that era. Now I'm warning you about David. Pay attention to this time. Pay attention this time. Valiant and Exo in the background. Nice. That was a good read. That was a good read. And that's Harbinger number one from Valiant Comics from 1992. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.